Yo, what is up, doggies? It's your boy, Beanie Kowloon, back at it on the YouTube. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my experience of breaking through on some end bomb. Now, I'm not really even sure if it was a breakthrough or like a mental breakdown, but whatever happened, it was some fucking wild shit, and it's a story that I've got to share. Now, before I get into the story, I want to say I do not condone any drug use. All these stories are from my past, and I mean, looking back on it, I, I wish I didn't even take these psychedelics, at least take them so young. But shit dog, I've already taken all these psychedelics and that's in my past and honestly, it would be a sin not to share these stories. Also, before I get in this story, I should probably share what N-Bomb is for those of you who are not aware. Now, I'm no drug expert, there's tons more YouTube videos out there that can better explain these compounds. Specifically, I would recommend a guy called The Drug Classroom. His YouTube channel is absolutely goaded, he'll cover nearly every single compound you can think of, and he'll tell you like the complete history of them, the worries, the dangers of them, the effects of them, like dosages you should take, just everything you need to know check out the drug classroom. But I'm gonna try to break down what N-Bomb is the best I can. N-Bomb is a drug with very similar effects to LSD and is oftentimes sold as LSD due to the fact that people can get this compound much cheaper and there's just a higher rate of profits to sell N-Bomb. The biggest difference and probably worry that most people have about N-Bomb is the fact that you can die off this compound, unlike drugs like LSD which are physically impossible to overdose on. Now as far as I can tell, if you're taking a safe amount of N-Bomb, it's actually like nearly impossible to die on it. But the thing is, when you're buying drugs like LSD or N-Bomb, a lot of the times, you're not going to know how much you're really getting. And people have died off of as little as two tabs of N-Bomb, so you have to be really careful with this kind of stuff, as you just don't know how powerful your tabs are, and you don't want to take too much, because I imagine you don't want to die. That's how they affect you differently. In my experience, the biggest difference between N-Bomb and Acid is just how it makes your body feel. With Acid, I mean, like, you're definitely gonna feel a little funky, but you mostly feel, like, all clear and you feel good. Now, with N-Bomb, shit just feels like you're on more of, like, a, a drug. Like, I, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, I remember it would make me all, like, gassy. Like, I would be farting and, like, burping a lot. And I also remember, like, my fingers would just go numb or I would just get really weird sensations in my body that just didn't feel good for my body. And as for the visuals, in my experience, everything moved with like a more jarring movement. Everything was like more sudden. Like off acid, everything looks like it's just breathing like all smoothly. As opposed to N-Bomb, the visuals all moved like more suddenly and it just looked unnatural. I remember some moments off N-Bomb where the visuals were more as if I was just like really drunk. Like everything was just really blurred. I couldn't even like see anything. Everything was like just looking blurry. Like shit was still looking really trippy, but opposed to acid, you know, everything looks like really clear and more real realistic almost like I mean it's impossible to explain but for those of you guys who have tripped I mean you know what I'm talking about but also this is all just my experience and I've also had tons of experience on M-Bomb where shit looked very clear and realistic and looked just like an acid trip but yeah now that I've somewhat broken down the differences between LSD and N-Bomb it's time to get into this fucking story so as I was saying before how N-Bomb is often sold as LSD that's exactly what happened to me I went to go cop 5 tabs of what I thought was LSD off of a plug that I had just recently acquired. Now I remember right when I bought these tabs off this guy, the dude told me he's like, make sure you only take one of those tabs cause they're really really strong. Dude was most likely trying to warn me not to take more than one tab because he knew it was N-Bomb and you know he doesn't want people dying, you know he's not a fucking monster. But my fucking dumbass you know thought I was a bit of a psychonaut at that time, I remember replying to the guy, oh dude no worries, I I've tripped a lot of acid, I think I can handle it. Little did I know this was no kind of acid, it was fucking N-Bomb, and it was definitely strong. Now I'm not too sure when I ended up taking these tabs, but if I had to guess it was probably the day of, because I mean, I'm a bit of a, what they like to call an addict, and I just can't fucking wait dog. when I get the drugs I, I gotta take them, you know what I mean? So I remember I took one of these gel tabs at like 11 o'clock at night, and also let me just say, these tabs look like the most boof tabs I've ever seen, like it looked like it was made in some dude's garage who like had like arthritis in both his hands or something, cause like th these tabs were made very poorly. Like they weren't completely cut, like each one was kind of still together, the tabs were different sizes than each other, and they were also really really small tabs, like smaller tabs than I've ever seen. So I remember I took one tab at 11 and waited till like 1220 and I still didn't really feel like I was feeling any effects. So it's at this point I decide to take another tab, which is, let me just say right now, if you guys ever take a tab of acid and you're like, dude I should take another one, I don't think I'm feeling it. Just give it like another hour, like just trust man, it's never a good idea to take another tab because you think this one's not gonna hit. And also during this time I was still under the impression that what I had was real LSD. Honestly, I didn't figure out this wasn't LSD until like the second time I tripped off this stuff because this first time as you'll be able to tell by the story, 
I was just too far gone to just even understand anything. So quite literally the moment I popped the second tab, I'm starting to feel the first tab very hard. This definitely had me a bit spooked, you know, having feelings of like, oh shit, I took too much, this might be a really bad trip. But at the same time, I remember thinking, I've already took this second tab, I might as well just have fun with it. So I had already written down ideas of stuff that I would want to do while I'm tripping sack, and one of those things was watch Gremlins 2. And shit, dog, that's exactly what I did. I went downstairs into my family room, set it up on the big TV, like, I had it going. Holy. Bro. What the? Dude. Now, there's not too much to share about this part of the story as, I mean, basically all that really happened is I watched Gremlins 2 and had a fantastic time. Like, that movie's wacky and wild. They got every kind of gremlin you could think of. They got, like, an electric gremlin, they got a spider gremlin, they got a bat gremlin. Like, the movie is just completely absurd. And on top of that, the gremlin's theme song absolutely fucking slaps. It's like, that shit had me fucking getting rowdy during my trip. So yeah, Gremlins 2, a fantastic time. I'd highly recommend it to anyone that's tripping sack. Now, I will say, I mean, it could be like a little bit scary because it is, it's like a children's horror movie, but I mean, if you're into that kind of stuff, like I am, like it was one of the best movies I've ever watched while tripping sack. That's all I can say. But yeah, after this is where the trip really starts going downhill a bit. So my next activity that I had planned that I decided to do was to play COD Zombies online with just some random people. In my head this sounded like a fantastic idea as I love COD Zombies and just meeting some random people while you're tripping sack like it, it, it just sounds very interesting but little did I know people in COD lobbies are not always the nicest people. I remember I joined up of a game of COD Zombies Origins, you know, thinking I was about to get myself the ice staff, you know, I was about to be balling, having a great time with the boys. But I remember I joined this lobby, and you know, first thing I tell these dudes right when I joined the lobby is, I'm tripping on acid. And I remember all the people in this party get really excited, and you're like, oh, we gotta play with this kid, and they invite me over to, like, a private match, and we started running some Origins. And, you know, everything seems to be going fine for a bit, until this one guy just starts loudly, like, screaming, like, fuck you, like, kill yourself, like, just all this crazy shit. And I remember thinking and hearing, like, one of the dudes in the party talking about how this dude was also on some, like, really crazy drugs, like, we were both just tweaking out. They're like, dude, we got two tweakers in this party. And, you know, th this shit made me feel shitty, because, like, one of my big biggest you know like fears or whatever whenever i'm tripping on psychedelics is just that like i will become a drug addict or something like that you know like that i'll just destroy my life with drugs and you know these people calling me a drug addict you know it wasn't making me feel good but i didn't even think to like leave this party as i was just so confused and i was trying to figure out what was going on i was like this dude's also tweaking out like I, this shit was just too crazy i couldn't leave and also, the fourth member of this party, if I remember correctly, was actually being, like, really nice the whole time and telling the one dude to calm down. And, you know, this made me want to stay in the party. So in this party, I got one dude that's just tweaking on some drugs, screaming out profanities, or at least acting like he's tweaking on some drugs. Another dude who just finds all this absolutely hilarious that he has two people in this PlayStation party that are on some wild drugs, and he's trying to, like, stimulate a fight. He's trying to just get some shit going that he finds funny. And then this fourth dude who is just, like, an absolute saint, you know, trying to get everyone to relax, but... Honestly, it was because of this dude I just didn't leave the party, and I wish I had. So I played this game of COD Zombies for god knows how long, with this one dude just constantly just angrily screaming about all kinds of stuff, and, you know, this was obviously tweaking me out. Like, any kind of hostility on any kind of psychedelics, like, it's gonna scare you, man. But I remember at some point, our game just fucking crashes, as COD Zombies always fucking crashes. It's, it's actually really annoying. But a bit of a blessing in this situation, I mean, if you really think about it. And after this game crashes, I remember getting invited to, like, a private party with who I believe was the, you know, guy who was being really nice throughout the whole time. And I don't remember what this dude was saying, but I remember somehow I felt like this dude just knew me. Like, I felt like he was bringing up stuff, like, from my past that he couldn't have possibly known about. I, I just don't remember at all, like, what he was saying, but I remember, like, just getting a sense that, like, I wasn't just talking to some normal dude. I was... I was talking to like some god or like a spirit or something very wacky. But what I do remember, and this is when shit gets extremely wacky, is I asked this dude like, who are you or something? And I, I shit you not, this man replies back to me with, 
I'm God. Right after this, my vision just goes completely white. Like, all I can just see is this, like, white clouds and just, like, it looks like I'm in heaven. And then I remember meeting the man himself, fucking God. But God just looked like some normal dude, and he was chill as fuck. I remember, like, I just talked to this dude. I'm like, so you're God? He's like, yep. I'm like, that's pretty cool. He's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And we just had, like, the most casual conversation, and it was just very weird. And I, I remember asking, like, so all this is real? And he's like, yeah, this is all entirely real. God is real, like, stuff like that. And then I remember right before I got sent back, he was like, yeah, this is all real, but you're not going to believe any of this. And this is the part of the trip that really, you know, still kind of fucks me up because, I mean, dude was right. I don't believe any of this. Like, it just sounds like nonsense. I think I had, like, some kind of, like, mental breakdown during this trip. But, like, he did say I'm not going to believe any of this. So, fuck, dude. M maybe it all was true, but I, I don't know. But, yeah, I go back to my body and first thing I do is pull out my phone and start texting every single person on my contacts. Oh, my God. God is real. It's insane. This is the most wonderful thing. I remember even posting a video on my story of me like literally crying just saying like oh my god I, I can't believe it god is real this is just it's just so beautiful just looking like an absolute tweak luckily all this shit happened at like five in the morning and i ended up deleting it at, like eight in the morning so it only got like 30 something views but still 30 people saw me just tweaking the fuck out but yeah there i was just texting everyone on my snapchat holy shit guys god is real it's pretty crazy and i remember i went to go play some music to celebrate so i look up on google you know one of my favorite artists kanye west and at this time his most recent album was jesus is king so when i looked up kanye west all this like jesus stuff started coming up and i was like holy shit just more evidence that god is real like of course god is real and i started playing some jesus is king and i was getting pretty lit to it and I also remember getting these really weird thoughts that, like, my brother, like, he also knew God was real. And that I have to tell him this story, like, once I got sober or whatever. And, like, he'll, he'll let me in on all these secrets about, you know, God being real and shit like that. While in actuality, I mean, I don't think this dude does, like, believe in God. I mean, as, I mean, he might believe in God. I don't know what the dude believes in. I mean, he's probably like me where he just, he doesn't fucking know. But at this time, I was envisioning my brother as, like, some fucking, like, priest or something like that. Like, someone who just knows all about God, you know, knows, knows all you need to know. And also, I feel like I should share that this is the same brother that I met on my DMT breakthrough, if you want to check out that video. I, I met my brother, and he told me that, like, he was God, and everyone was God. Now, I still haven't told my brother about any of this, because I still just think it's because, like, I have a close relationship with this brother, and, you know, I know he's done other drugs in his past, so, like, I feel like it's more just my mind saying this than that my brother and me are actually connected and both God, but... The fact that this happened twice to me, it does kind of get me thinking, you know, I can't lie. And during this time, like, right after I met God, I would say I was having, like, a pleasant time, like, one of the most wonderful times ever, but, like, something just felt off about it. Like, it, it didn't feel like it was real, or I, would, I was also feeling very confused. And I remember in the process of texting all these people, you know, God is real and shit like that, I called a couple people, and one of my friends, you know, ended up picking up, and this dude was completely sober, as, you know, I had just woken him up, it was like 6am, and, you know, I just woke him up from his sleep, and, you know, just hearing this sober dude, like, he just kind of let me know, he's like, yo, what you're, so what you're saying right now doesn't really make sense, so you met God, and your brother or whatever is, like, also God, and at this point, I, I really realized, alright, maybe none of it did make any sense. And I remember right after this being really stressed out and confused about what had just happened, I remember I was just like sitting down with my eyes closed, literally just gritting my teeth as hard as I could, trying to figure out what happened. And I remember one of the visuals I saw was like a bucket that said like anxiety, another bucket that said paranoia, and another bucket that said like depression, and they just all started overfilling. And it's at this point I somewhat came to the realization that, alright, it's just a bad trip and there's there's no sense to make out of this. And, you know, trying to make sense out of this is just going to confuse me even more. And I remember I ended up going up into my room and just trying to go to sleep. But going to sleep was absolutely no luck. It was like 6 or 7 a.m. and I had taken one tab at 11 and one tab at like 12, 15. Like, I was still tripping very hard. And also, even though I said I realized, you know, maybe just none of it made any sense, I still just couldn't stop thinking about it. Like, I was like, what happened there? And also, I kept thinking, remembering that the dude told me you're not going to believe any of this. And, you know, that was just, like, really making me think, like, I, I don't know. Was it real? Was it not? I was just very tweaked out. I, I don't know how else to put it. Now, I remember trying to fall asleep up until, like, noon, but it was just no luck. I realized I was not going to be falling asleep tonight. And, you know, at this point, at, like, noon, like, I, I wouldn't really say I'm tripping, but I don't know at least for me until i fall asleep i feel like the trip doesn't ever really completely wear off 
I was still getting some mild visuals like when I would close my eyes and everything just kind of looked a little weird and I just had a strong feeling of like dissociation like everything I said wasn't my own words like and I, when I was talking I would talk really quietly and like nervously and you know this was a bit of an issue for me because you know it's noon at this point and both my parents and my whole family is awake and you know I remember I would try to talk to my mom and like first thing she said is like what's wrong and I'm like nothing. Now I don't think my parents like knew or thought at all that I was tripping on any kind of drugs but they probably just thought I was like depressed as I was just sounding pretty off. But I remember just going back into my room and trying to go to sleep so you know I could get back to normal but there was just no luck and then during my process of going back to sleep I end up getting a text from one of my coworkers at Chipotle asking if I could cover their shift from 4 to 11 and this is where I made the absolute worst mistake of my whole trip, worse than playing fucking COD Zombies. I fucking respond back to this person, yeah, sure. Because in my head, I just wanted to get away from my parents, like I just didn't want them to see me like this and think that I was on some kind of drug because I was still feeling very, very off. I didn't really think about the fact that if I was feeling off in my normal environment, you know, where I'm happiest, you know, with my family and shit, shit's gonna feel a lot more off at fucking Chipotle where I gotta work and also, I had just started working there like three weeks ago, so like, even when I wasn't even completely sure how to work my job, you know, normally like sober, I certainly had no idea what I was supposed to be doing when I was still just coming off of one of the most intense worst acid trips or n-bomb trips that I've ever had. I remember right when I pulled up to work, you know, sitting outside of the Chipotle in my car, I had already knew that I had made a huge mistake. I was like, how am I about to do this? I started like practicing like saying, welcome to Chipotle, can I take your order? Like in my car, just looking like an absolute freak. And I remember seeing people looking at me and I'm like, all right, I am not ready for this. What have I done? But shit, dog, I walked into that Chipotle uniform and all ready to work, man. I remember feeling like I just wasn't able to talk to anyone and anyone that I did talk to just knew that I was on some kind of psychedelic when clearly they didn't. And also I recall doing my job quite poorly and being asked multiple times from multiple different people if this was my first day working there which you know had me thinking yeah I definitely should not have showed up to work today. And it almost felt like the longer I was at work the more and more I was losing my mind like not that I was even like tripping harder but. I just kept feeling, feeling like I just broke my mind, like I thought that I was permanently fucked because the longer I was there, just I, I just started getting more and more irrational thoughts. I remember by the end of the day, once we finally got to closing the store, and this was the first time I had ever closed the Chipotle by myself besides being trained, and like closing it, you gotta clean everything up, you gotta make sure the floors are like spotless, you know, it's a lot of shit you gotta do. And dog, I did not do fucking shit. I, I didn't even know how to like use a broom at this point. Like I remember trying to broom some shit up and like I might as well have been holding that broom upside down the way I was using it. Like I did not know what the fuck I was doing. Luckily for me, the closing manager that day was an absolute saint and she saw that I was struggling. I think she knew that I was either on some kind of drug or just really, really fucking depressed. And I remember constantly asking this girl like, is this good enough? And like every time at first she was like, no, you still got to do this. Or you got to do this. But then one of the times I asked, she was just like, yeah, that's good enough. And then I know damn well that girl had to spend another like two hours just fixing my clothes because, you know, my dumb ass couldn't do it. So I highly appreciate that girl. You know, she, she ended up quitting like or getting transferred like two weeks later. So never really saw her again, but she was a real one. And also, you know, once you get off work, you know, you got to clock out. And I managed to forget my clock out pin, even though I remembered it like when I got there, I knew what it was. But I forgot it over the course of working because like as I was saying, I felt like my mind was getting more and more fucked. Like I remember literally the only thoughts going through my head were yeah, I've permanently fucked up, I've really done it this time, I'm never going back to normal. It's thinking some really paranoid shit, you know? I remember on the drive home just praying to God that you know everyone in my family is asleep so you know I just don't have to deal with any of them because like the whole reason I wanted to work is so I wouldn't have to you know deal with my family and them see me like this. But then going to work just fucked me up even more so now. I was far more fucked up than if I would have just stayed at home and you know just dealt with my family normally. And what do you know it, as soon as I walk in the door, my whole entire family is in the kitchen literally waiting for me because we had just gotten a new dog which in any other circumstance is very fucking hype. But this was the worst possible scenario for me because I just, I had to literally talk to every single person in my family, not just like my mom was up or my dad was up. Everyone was up and they were all literally waiting for me and I remember just talking to them with just absolutely no emotion Just like oh we got a new dog. That's cool I only had a short conversation with them as I left as you know as soon as I felt like it was a good time to leave Which was after like five minutes and also I should say all my worries about you know people knowing that I'm tripping You know my parents knowing that I was tripping 
they had no idea. They definitely just thought I was really, really fucking depressed, which is also not something I wanted them to think. So, you know, it wasn't a good situation, but my fear of them all knowing that I was, you know, tripping sack, that, that it was not something that they knew. And I ended up going upstairs, decided to smoke some weed, which was not a good idea. That literally just made me feel like I was tripping again. And like that really tweaked me out. I'm like, oh, so I really did permanently fuck myself up. But then after that, I ended up falling asleep, woke up the next day, and hey man, I felt fine. So yeah, I know that was a bit of a longer story, but I, I hope you enjoyed it. And also, if you're wondering, you know, how I even knew that this was N-Bomb, it was because the second time I took this stuff, and I only took one tab, because, you know, I learned my lesson from the first time. Every single time, like, I swallowed, I just felt the strongest chemical taste I could have ever imagined. Like, it, it was, like, literally painful. Like, I don't know how I didn't feel it off of two tabs, but I think I was just so gone that I, I didn't even understand. But yeah, that was my story of my breakthrough on N-Bomb, and, I, like, I see, I don't even know if it was a breakthrough, because it felt more like a fucking schizophrenic break than anything. Like, I remember just thinking that, like, literally everything was connected. Like, I forgot to share this part, but I remember at one point, like, right after I met God or whatever, I was, like, walking around just, like that means this and this means that and yes yes like i would just i thought everything like i just i was just making no sense but for some reason i thought i was making complete sense but yeah i don't really feel like this trip really taught me anything or that i really even met god at all but you know god did tell me that i wasn't gonna believe it that's that's what kind of fucks me up you know because i really don't believe it so i mean the dude was right but i mean at the same time i feel like it's a lot more likely that i was just tweaking out on some hard drugs because like I mean, if there is a god, I feel like I highly doubt the way you would meet him would be by taking drugs. Like, I, I don't know. It just seems, doesn't seem logical to me. But hey, dog, who really knows? Shit gets wacky on them psychedelics. I couldn't tell you what's real, what's fake. Like, what even really is real? You know what I mean, dog? Like, come on, this could all be a simulation. You, you know what I'm saying, doggies? If psychedelics really are, you know, teaching us something, you know, something that we couldn't possibly comprehend without psychedelics, I feel like that it's not even necessary because by the time you know you're back off the psychedelics you kind of just forget it all or like you, you can't really make sense of it so even if whatever is going on when you're on psychedelics is showing you some like deeper truth that you couldn't possibly understand I mean you couldn't possibly understand so like in my opinion there's just no real reason to try to you know like figure out what the hell is going on because I mean that shit's just gonna make you go crazy but yeah i'm going off on some tangents i'm making this long video even longer so i'm gonna end it here and as always peace out doggies let's get lost tonight you could be my black kate moss tonight play secretary on the boss tonight and you don't give a fuck what they all say right awesome the christian and christian dior damn they don't make them like this anymore i am